Okay, so today I'm going to do a video on uh, how we can use game theory to look at a, a decision from uh, football. And the example here was one that some game theorists used from a, a football game from some while ago. So I'll show you the uh, video highlight. This was the 1984 Orange Bowl after the 1983 season. Nebraska was playing Miami um, for the national championship. They had just scored a touchdown, and now they're going to go for two to try to win the game. And one of the most famous plays in college football history there, the two-point conversion goes uh, awry, gets batted away. That's Howard Schnellenberger uh, in Miami. They just won their first national championship. No, Nebraska lost the game 31-30. Now, as some of the uh, background to that, Nebraska – was undefeated going into that game. And back in the, those days, 1983, they had ties in college football. They didn't have any overtime. Uh, Miami had one loss. They ended up winning the national championship because they beat Nebraska head to head in this game. There were no other undefeated, untied teams. So if Nebraska had kicked the extra point and tied the game, they in all likelihood would have been voted uh, national champions because they would have been undefeated with only uh, with uh, a tie, and so, in all in all essence here, if, if the game ends in a tie, Nebraska wins the national championship. Now, uh, Huskers coach Tom Osborne for for years uh, was praised for this very gutsy uh, call that he made, and eventually, uh, Coach Osborne uh, won uh, three national championships. Well, I'd say only two because uh, it's in, in 1997 they split with Michigan, and Michigan was a better team that year. But the, he won a national championship in 1994 actually beating Miami in the Orange Bowl again that time. And, and so uh, Coach Osborne eventually won national championships. But here we can apply a game tree, and this allows us to see some of the power of game theory. So I have our game tree set up here on, on the board. And remember, Nebraska was trailing 31-17. So one assumption we're going to make is let's assume that the, the team that's trailing by two scores here, by 14 points, is going to score twice. And the other team's not going to score in the interim. So we're going to set up two decisions that the, uh, the, the team that's trailing has to make. And we're simply going to assume here that there's going to be a first TD and then a second TD. And then the question would be, do you want to kick the extra point or go for a two after you score a TD? What Nebraska did is they kicked the extra point after the first uh, touchdown, made it 31-24. Then they scored a second time and made it 31 to 30, and they decided to go for two. So, and what we can show is that strategy would have been dominated. So we can use some basic game theory to show that the strategy of going for two after the second touchdown would have been dominated by a strategy of going for two after the first uh, touchdown. So, um, we have a, a two-point conversion here. That's going to be decided by – that's that's not a strategic choice to, of the uh, Nebraska coach as to whether or not that's going to be successful or not. We can model that where it's at as a, a move by nature. And so I have a, a, a empty circle here. and have a, by the first one, it shows up here. I was saying nature, and nature is going to decide this. So uh, our team scores first here, and they decide to either kick or go for two. Now what Nebraska did was they kicked. And then they came down here, and this is the, after they scored the second TD. All of these are going to be here on this line here showing what they do after the second TD. They chose to go for two, and then that created another uh, you know, coin flip. And I'll, I'll just assume here that they have a 0.5 uh, chance of, of being successful or failing on the uh, two-point attempt. That's actually pretty close to the uh, historical average of success for uh, two-point tries. And if Nebraska, on the second time, they, after they score, um, after the second touchdown, if they go for two and they're successful, they win the game. If they go for two and they fail, well, then that's what happened in reality. It turned up 31-30. They lose the game. If they kick the extra point, we assume that they make it for sure and they tie the game. Now, what we can say is that Coach Osborne showed that he preferred this coin flip between winning or losing to tying the game. So that was his choice. So, you know, it, it's not clear. Different people could look at this uh, this choice here. Is this uh, going for two with this coin flip of these two outcomes, win or lose, is that better than tying 
or worse than time. Well, you could think of it either way, but Coach Osborne chose to go for two. So he shows that this lottery between a 0.5 probability of winning and a 0.5 probability of losing was, in his mind, preferred to settling for the time. Okay, but now let's consider, well, what happens after the first TVD if you decide to go for two? Well, you go for two, and again, we have that same coin flip involved here about whether it's going to be successful or not. We'll assume any time we have a, a, a two-point attempt here, again, these probabilities are 0.5 and 0.5. So you have a 0.5 uh, chance of being successful on the first one and a 0.5 chance of failing. Now, if you're successful on the first one, rather than the score of 31-25, you score the second touchdown, you have a choice between going for two or kicking. I didn't actually draw in the, uh, the go for two option here because if you kick the extra point, it's 32-31 and you win. So you would for sure uh, prefer to kick the extra point given that there's, you know, the way we have it here, we're assuming the extra point is, is going to be good for sure and get the uh, uh, win outcome. But what if you fail? If you fail on that first two-point attempt, that makes it 31-23. Now you score the second touchdown. You could kick, and you'll make it for sure, but that ends up to score 31-30, and you lose. Well, okay, so that's going to be dominated. You're not going to kick. So what we can tell you you're going to do is like, when we come down here and say you're going to kick if you're uh, is successful the first time, you're going to go for two if, if you fail after the first uh on the two-point conversion after the first touchdown. And then you've got, the, again, the coin flip here. You're going for the uh, two-point conversion. And the second time you go for it, if you're successful, well, that, you know, you're down 31-30. Eight points gets you to 31-31. That's a tie. If you uh, fail again, that's 31-29, and you lose. Okay, so now let's consider what we have here. If you go for two after the first uh, touchdown, you end up with a 0.5 chance of winning the game. And then you've got 0 0.5 and you know, a, a 0.5 chance of losing. Well, you know, multiply those probabilities together and that would tell us that you'd end up with a 0.25 chance of, of losing the game down here where you've made, you uh, missed on both two-point conversions. You're down here and you lost the game 31-29. Or you could Go for two after the second one, and you end up 31-31, that's a tie. So what do we have here? In going for two after the second touchdown gave us this um, lottery. 0.5 chance of, of winning the game, 0.5 chance of losing the game. And you chose, and you revealed that that was better than a tie. What if you go for two after the first game and a touchdown? Well, you have a 0.25, you have a 0.5 chance of winning the game because you were successful in the first one. Then you have a 0.25 chance of a tie and a 0.25 chance of, of losing the game. Assuming that you prefer a tie to a, a, a loss, then it's got to be the case that this, uh, I'll compare, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 is better than 0.5 win, 0.5 lose. And if there's any... Um, you know, if, if there's any uh, bad taste in your mouth of, like, quote, settling for a tie, well, you didn't really settle for the tie here in this case. You went for two after the first touchdown, and then you went for two. You went to two for two to try to tie the game. You didn't, like, just kick the extra point to, to settle for a tie. You'd have to be successful on that second uh, two-point conversion uh, to, to win. So there, there's no settling here. Uh, you, you end in a tie, but you, in a sense, you sort of earned it by making a two-point conversion at the end when you had to to get that, that tie. And again, so the, it would simply be the case if you're if you would prefer a lottery where the outcomes are 0.5 chance of winning, 0.5 chance of losing. If you prefer that lottery to a tie, then you must prefer a 0.5 chance of winning, a 0.25 chance of losing, and a 0.25 chance of ending in a tie to any of the tie. So. This strategy, uh, this strategy of going for two after the first touchdown is going to give you an outcome that is necessarily better than this outcome. And you've already revealed that this outcome was preferred to settling for the time. And so what we can see here is that a little bit of basic game theory shows us that uh, Coach Osborne really should have gone, if he was willing to go for 
two after the second touchdown. He should have gone for two after the first touchdown. Went into his own preferences, as he revealed there. That would have been better than uh, going for, for two after the second touchdown. This is a point that's now actually sort of like percolated back into uh, uh, decision making in football through uh, sports analytics. This is one of the point the things they've been able to, to come up with, uh, uh, showing this type of uh, uh, outcome here and showing that, yeah, it really is the case if you're down 14 points, going for two is going to dom after the first touchdown is going to dominate going for two after the second. It's a little bit different now, whether you're talking about the NFL or college football, we have overtime. So we yeah, have overtime in college now. So that would change this in terms of you'd have to say, this is OT, and then you'd have to say, well, what's the, the likelihood of the outcome here? This outcome and this outcome would then have to be changed to OT. And uh, you have to figure out what those outcomes would be. But the points would still hold that this is a... Um, that this is a, a a better option than going for two after the second after the second score. Um, so there you have it. How you can apply a little bit of uh, of game theory to uh, analyze some real world situations. And again, the, the, you know, as Tom Osborne was revered for all these years because he he showed the guts of of going for two as opposed to settling for a tie and remember settling for a tie and the national championship because they, they in all in all likelihood they would have been voted national champions because we didn't have a, a playoff at that point in time. They almost were virtually certain they would have been voted national champions. Um, I actually think that's sort of a, a selfish decision on the part of Co Coach Osborne because he eventually won a national championship after the 1994 season, but his players from the 1983 uh, team didn't get to play on that national championship team. So I, I think a couple of them were probably on his coaching staff, but you know, he, uh, the, the, the players in 1983 had one shot at a national championship. And I guess my take would be if you've, there, there's no way you can sort of like back into a national championship. You've earned it over the course of the entire season. You shouldn't uh, feel bad about kicking that extra point and, and, and winning the national championship. But still doesn't matter. Uh, Coach Osborne showed he preferred the, the gamble to the tie and so he should have preferred this gamble uh, to, to the tie, or this gamble to going for the, the two after the second touchdown. So there again, a little bit of uh, how you can use a little bit of game theory to um, understand what's going on in sports.